Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of um, online shopping records and we're going to try to predict uh, whether a given user will generate revenue for the website. Uh, and we have a bunch of features about what the user was doing on the website, like how, many, how long they spent on each uh, page and uh, what, what time of year they came on and if they're a returning visitor or not, things like that. So um, let's hop into the notebook and I have the task for today which is given data about online shoppers let's try to predict whether a given shopper will generate revenue or not and you can see this final column here is actually just a true or false whether they generated it or not so this is what we'll be trying to predict alright so um, I'm gonna keep this simple today uh, we're gonna import only uh, this is all we need for today's notebook NumPy and Pandas uh, standard scalar and train test split from sklearn and we'll use the logistic regression model from sklearn. So I'll import that and we'll load in the data using pandas.readcsv. So we can get the uh, we can get the CSV file right here, paste that in and take a look. And you can see we have 18 columns and um, most of them are numerical form. The remaining ones we have a uh, one uh, ordinal uh, feature here, which we will ordinal encode, uh, and we have this could be a boolean returning visitor, new visitor. If there's more than uh, two values, we'll use one hot encoding, and then for weekend and revenue, that will just be uh, type converted into integers, and revenue is what we're trying to predict. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the info. Trying to see anything weird here. Uh, I notice we have some null values at the top, just a few, right? Because we have uh, 12,330 rows in total. And you can see all of these ones have the full number of non nulls. So uh, we'll start pre processing. Whoops, <laughs> not a question mark. Um, and we'll deal with missing values. Alright, so let's get the NA data frame. That is NA.sum. We're summing across rows to see the total number of NAs in each column. And you can see we have 14 uh, null values in the just these columns. And it's interesting that we have the same number in each of them. That would suggest to me that maybe there are 14 unfinished records. So what we can do uh, to, to check that, if we do the isNA.sum, but instead of summing over the rows like we did here, we sum over the columns, then we'll get the total number of null values in each column, uh, which looks like this. And you'll notice uh, that because we, if we have zero null values, well, some, some of these obviously are going to have um, some non-zero values. If we turn this into a Boolean series, then we can use this to index uh, the rows in which we have uh, any null values. So all we have to do is data sub that as the index. And here we go. So just as I suspected, looks like there are 14 records where we have all these null values right in here. And uh, these are unreliable records. It looks like even here we have zeros all in this. I'm not sure it all has March. I'm not sure why this is the case, but I don't think it would be wise to use this, uh, to use these examples. So what we can do is drop them, and because we know these are the only rows that have null values, uh, we can just do data dot drop na axis zero to drop all rows with null values. And anytime we're dropping rows, we're going to want to reset the index afterwards and include drop equals true to prevent the old indices from being added as a new column. So that's our new data. And if we took a look now, uh, we, sh we have 12,316 rows 
as opposed to before we had 12,330. But uh, we also should note that the sum, the total number, so let me print this, uh, total missing values is zero. We're done with missing values. All right, so let's move on to encoding. So like I said, we only have to encode three or four columns here. Looks like maybe just two actually, because uh, Boolean columns can be converted very easily. Uh, in fact, why don't I just do that right off the bat? All we have to do is, uh, well, you know, actually I'll come back to it. But all we have to do is do as type int. So I'm going to ordinal encode this. So here, why don't I make a dictionary that maps a column to a list of the unique values in that column. And that's for every column in data.columns if data.dtypes subcolumn is object. Uh, I could say or boolean also, but we don't need that. So these are the only object ones. We have month and visitor type. And we can see uh, month is an ordinal feature uh, where the uh, you can order the number of, you can order the months in an ordering. So we'll use ordinal encoding there where we just assign each one a unique integer and the model will understand that uh, the value of uh, December is greater than a value of July, which uh, could equate to temperature or humidity or s something else. And the visitor type is a nominal feature, so there's no ordering between these three, so we can use one-hot encoding for that. So I'm going to make two functions here. And you know, it's not actually, we don't really need to do functions. Uh, because it's only one column each, I might just write out the code like this. So I'll create, uh, why don't we do functions? It's nicer. We're only going to call them once, though. So we'll make an ordinal encode function that takes in a data frame, a column, and a prefix. No, not, no, not uh, an ordering. And we're going to start by making a copy of our data frame. And we're going to apply a lambda function to the column of our choosing. Dot apply lambda. It takes in some x. And it's going to spit back um, ordering dot index of x. And that's it. We'll return df after that. So um, if we make an ordering, why don't I make it right now? We'll have month ordering. And yeah, for the sake of uh, time, I'll just paste it in. We have just every month, um, notice I have June as four characters because they actually encoded it that way here. Um, but I um, made an ordering that if you notice, the inde indices of this list will be the ordinal uh, values. So if we index, ordering.index of x, uh, we'll take in some name of a month, one of these. That's going to be our x, one of these. And it's going to spit back the number associated with it based on the ordering. So uh, we could say over here, um, ordinal encode data, the column is month, and the month ordering is our ordering. Oh, I didn't define it. Month, oh. Now you can see um, our months have been converted into numbers uh, as per our ordering. So I'm going to hold off on actually setting it to that yet. Uh, we're going to make one more function here, which will be one hot encode. Takes in a data frame, a column, and this time a prefix. So we'll start again by making a copy of our data frame. And we're going to, well actually we're going to start by making a dummies data frame, which we'll use pandas.getDummies to do. And that will take a column 
and a prefix. So the the dummies um, get dummies. Basically, uh, so we'll use visitor type here, and this is data and prefix. Let's let's call it a visitor. Now you can see uh, what it does. It takes each unique value of the original column that we wanted, which was visitor type, and it's going to use all each unique value as a new column, and then one hot encode each example so that. Uh, so, for example, example zero had returning visitor, and ex the last example here had new visitor. So you can see a one is here for returning visitor, and down here a one is here for new visitor. All right, but this will just, uh, and in fact, we probably don't even need a prefix here. There's not really a reason to. Looks like this. So, um, uh, let's see. Okay. I'm going to, we're going to make this dummies and store it in dummies. And then we're going to concatenate using pandas.concat the original data frame and the dummies along the column axis. When we're done with that, we'll drop the original column from which we created the dummies and return df. Okay, so um, well, we could do visitor prefix. I guess we'll just do a capital V. Um, and then we'll do a one hot encode the data visitor type and visitor prefix. All right, and uh, I'll make this the new data frame. We'll run this, run this, and run this. Now if we look at data, you should see um, everything is in numerical form. We have our dummies at the end and month has been converted, but we still have these um, right here. So like I said, it's very easy to do this. Data sub weekend equals data sub weekend dot as type numpy dot int. And we could do the same thing for revenue, just replacing this with revenue. All right, we run that. Now you can see we have fully numeric data. Weekend and revenue are now zeros and ones. So I'll just put that at the end of here. All right, so we're ready to split and scale our data. So I'll divide the data into a Y and X. Y is what we're gonna try to predict. Data sub revenue, because we're trying to predict the revenue. Uh, and we'll make a copy of that. And then x is going to be data so uh, data dot drop revenue. Whoops. All right. Now we'll create a scalar, and this is the standard scalar from sklearn. So x equals scalar dot fit transform x. Uh, so now, if we want to look at what x looks like. I'll view it as a data frame. Uh, we have uh, all the values originally, but now they've been scaled so that each column has uh, unit variance and mean zero. And that will make it easier for our model to deal with. And then when we're done with that, we're going to split it into train and test sets, x train, x test, y train, y test, using the train test split function from sklearn. We're splitting x and y. And we're also going to uh, specify a train size of 70% and include a random state uh, of 20. This can be anything just to, so that we can reproduce the results. All right, now we'll begin training. So what I'm going to do is train like four or five different logistic regression models, each with different regularization strengths. And that will allow us to see which uh, like how much regularization should we apply. So I'll create this models list, which will just be empty, and I'll create a C's. So C is the inverse regularization strength. So uh, the higher the C, the less regularization there is, and the lower the C, the more regularization there is. So um, we can start with uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13
and maybe 100.0. And I'll say for i in range length of c's, for each c essentially, we're going to create a new model, which will be a logistic regression. But the c is going to be c sub i. Then we'll fit that model on the train set, and we will append it to models. All right, so now models sh should look like this. as a bunch of different logistic regressions. Um, all right, so let's get the results. Um, we will create a model accuracy list, which we'll just use list comprehension to say model.score, x test, y test, for model in models. So it's just going to be a list of the scores, of the accuracy scores. And then let's just print out uh, each one. So I'll just paste it in, make it look nice. Um, so you can see we're printing model accuracy, and then the regularization strength, and then the actual accuracy value. So let's see what that looks like. All right. And it looks like um, higher regularization, uh, inverse regularization strengths here are performing best. So why don't I go ahead and add another one at the end here, 1000.0. And so for that, I just need to paste in another one here. This will be uh, the fifth one. Oh, this should be the fifth one as well. Oh, I didn't train it. All right. And it looks like there's no improvement. So I'm just going to add one more just to be sure. There's probably not going to be any improvement. Uh, but just want to make sure. So I'll add one more here. This will be the sixth one. Well, the seventh one, actually. Let's just indent those. So I'll train this and then check. And yeah, no improvement. So it looks like um, once we have c equals 10, uh, that, that looks like our best bet. All right. And I, I guess that sums up today's video. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content, and uh, leave any comments you have in the section below. So, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.